If you had to introduce yourself to the world, what would you say? I would say, I am Kay's sister, I'm an abortion survivor. Do you want your mom to feel any guilt? Oh no, oh no, 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 no. I don't want her to feel guilty. I want her to know that it's okay. And I think she's starting to feel that. No, I wouldn't want guilt on anyone. Mm -mm. I accepted the things she does, and she accepted the things I do, and we just love each other. The amazing thing is that she forgave me. She forgave me. Would you say forgiving your mom was for her or more for you? I believe it was for both of us. It, it was largely for me. It freed me. It was very freeing to let go of that forgiving and not holding that grudge against her. And I believe it was freeing for her to know that I'm not mad at her and I'm not going to leave her for what she did to me. We kind of grew up together and she's my best friend. She's my best friend. Welcome to SBSK. Join me as I travel around the world and interview individuals living with a condition to prove no matter how you communicate or what obstacles you face, you're always deserving of love and acceptance. So without hesitation, let's meet today's friend. When somebody meets you for the first time, what do you hope they think? Uh... I'm one that I like to warn people before they meet me and because I don't she want to scare people. And so when people first meet me, I like to say, please don't look, don't judge me, don't look at this, don't look at me, look at my heart, look at me as a person because I love people, I care about people and I want to be friends and I want to you know, work with you, I want to be around you, so I, I, you know, I want, don't look at me like this. When you see, when you see me, see my heart, don't see this. What is a failed abortion attempt? It means that you went through the procedure and find out a month later that you're still pregnant. What are some of the symptoms from the abortion attempt? Hmm? What are some of the symptoms from the uh, Oh, from the, uh, the paralyzed on the side of my face, on the one side, I got facial paralysis, and I talk with a little, not really stuttering, but I don't talk plainly, and I have eye is, eye issue, I don't see really good, it's just when I go outside, and my legs are a little bit, one's a little smaller than the other, why did you decide to forgive her? Uh, I had empathy. I was trying to I was trying to relate to what she was going through at the time. She was a single parent, already had two children, two smaller children, and she didn't know how she was gonna make it. So I was trying to have empathy for her situation and know what she was going through. But what really made it's easier to forgive her was she was very remorseful for it. Oh, yeah. And she, yeah, she had, she was very remorseful for it, very honest about it. It was well, being a child, being looking different, and because my sisters and brothers, they were normal, and they had their activities, they had their friends, and they did things I didn't, you know, I was, kind of left out of that kind of stuff. So it was a challenge, to say the least. Sitting in that room alone and all the other young people were out having a good time and she was in so much pain, you know, and uh, it's, it was hard. It was hard. Yeah, it was hard. When you were a child, what did you think about yourself? When I was a child, I hated myself. I despised myself. I didn't like who I was or what I looked like. Well, I was this ugly creature. And I, I, didn't, I just wanted to hide. I didn't want to 
So, yeah, as a child, I didn't like myself. You know, I was scared of even my own self. She so, so, so desired to be loved and to love someone. And she don't know it, but I found, uh, I found something that you had written when you were here at growing up. I found a note that you wrote. And at talking about will I ever be loved and will I ever find love, oh boy. <laughs> when somebody hears your story, what's the number one thing you want them to learn? The one thing they learn is that you can overcome anything and that you don't let your obstacles get in your way and you don't let people define you you know who you are. Tell me about Richard. <laughs> <laughs> oh should, boy. Should I, <laughs> 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 I love Richard. We don't always agree. Yeah, but he's awesome. He loves my daughter and he cares for my daughter and that is the absolute bottom line. We never tasted in 2011, it was, yeah, that's how I knew it. I what? wasn't expecting to meet anybody, so... <laughs> Why weren't you expecting to meet anybody? Not because people like me, yeah, I was 42, never been on a date yet, so I'd totally given up on dating, much less marriage or any of that stuff. So I wasn't even looking for boyfriends now at that point. I was amazed. I'm like, do you even know what I look like? Huh? What are you doing? So, and I even had people say, I got my wedding ring right here. And, no, right here. I got my wedding ring. And I had people say, oh, you're, you're acting crazy. If he could marry you, he must be as ugly as you. I found it kind of disgusting. You know, that, that nobody would give her the time of day. She actually did have a marriage proposal from somebody she didn't really know. She worked with him, and he was trying to, I think he was trying to get his citizenship, <laughs> you know, and she saw through right through that, you know, and said no, but she didn't have any, any relationships with anybody. What did you think the first time Richard reached out to you? I was like, okay, uh, that I was questioning his motives. <laughs> it's like, are you just feeling sorry for me, or do you really like me? Because uh, you're just so sorry for me, I don't want you. Uh, but I found out quickly he, that he really had interest. Wedding, which she was beautiful. I mean, beautiful. What did she look like in her dress? Oh my goodness. Wow. I, I wasn't prepared for that. I mean, she was just, just stunning. You know, the, she had uh, friends help her with makeup and her hairstyle and jewelry and everything else. And I was like, my goodness. She was dancing with Richard. And I saw the first time in my heart the way she was dancing with him, how much she loved him. You know, and that was it. That settled it. Yeah, because I saw how much she loved him and how much he loved her in that one dance. It was awesome. I think everybody is worthy of love. There is no particular person that, no, you can't have love because you're this way. But we're all worthy of love. We all want to be loved and we all want to know that we are loved. Not just my daughter, she's my best friend. And I'm so proud of her. And I love her so much. Yeah, and I even like Richard. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, funny. Not That's first. funny because I didn't at first. Thing. I didn't at first. I thought, oh my, what? Oh no. <laughs> An internet date? <laughs> <laughs> don't give up. Don't let it. Don't let what the world thinks. Don't let what people think take away or steal your purpose. But hold on, believe, have confidence in who you are, hold on. Don't give up, you have a purpose and you are worthy of love. Thanks for watching SBSK. 
We believe the world is a better place when everyone takes the time to understand one another. If you want to be part of the community of people who believe that, click the big yellow SBSK button to subscribe. Thank you, and see you next time.